up Wayne Marley and Daniel Jackson. Please put your hands together for a bit. Doesn't really matter who you're married for. You love watching him play. His name's Leon Davis, everybody. Leon. Great, uh, Congratulations last night. It was, it was a great game. Does it feel good out on the MCG as you watch all these Carlton fans leave early? <laughs> it does, actually. Um, yeah. I, uh, does it think... feel good ruining people's nights, does it? <laughs> I think uh, all the Collingwood fans are leaving early because they uh, beat us the last three times. So, um, so to get one back on them was good. Bit of a build-up, I'm sure, in the Collingwood rooms. We'll talk about that more after this. But just in case you missed the scores last mm. night, here they are. <laughs> 1994 to 4 six, that, is, that is not a typo. 4 16 40, Sam. That is uh, outrageous. Yeah, it's a goal a quarter. Yeah. Now, this this yeah. is the moment. And what we're going to focus on is the positives, Andrew Marr, and that is Leon Davis. I say thank you, Leon, for providing some highlights. Oh, this no. just yeah. absolutely outstanding. That was in the first term. Look at this. This is crazy. No, that's been CGI'd. You know. <laughs> do you mind talking me that. through that? What goes through your head when you do that? Um, not a lot really, um, <laughs> just, just uh, it's something you practice growing up and that training and stuff like that, so when Who you get in that situation... Who's practice spinning a ball like that? <laughs> just uh, having competitions and that with my you know, two brothers growing up and that, I uh, always always try to do the tricky stuff and that, so um, it's that training and that, always do that, so when you, when you get into a game it, it's just instinctive, so... It's yeah. incredible. You did something else that was equally impressive. We'll have a look at that. This was your second goal for the night, Leon. Uh, have a look amazing. at this. You've seen it back. You told me just then. Which of these two goals do you <laughs> rate more? Do you enjoy more yourself? There you go, boy. Um, well, I don't have to say the second one. Just uh, breaking the tackle was uh, a bit harder and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I'll probably say the second one. And I know you say you don't think about anything, but what do you actually focus on? Are you, what part of the kind of goal posts or whatever are you looking at? Um, probably just, just knowing where the goals are. I'll try to have a quick look first and then, and then yeah, sort of just try and go from there and try and kick it. It's amazing. I know what was interesting for me last night, and there's been a bit of discussion about this this year. After you kicked that first goal, you went straight off the ground, dragged for showing off, I assume. <laughs> and, then, and then after your third goal, which we're seeing here now, you went straight off after this goal as well. Is it unusual, because we, as punters, we watch the game and think, surely you should stay on, because your adrenaline would be up. You'd be feeling really good. Surely you should stay on the ground for the next two or three minutes at least, and that rotation should wait. I think I stayed on too long to try and get a kick. So um, <laughs> I, uh, once I kicked a goal, I thought, yeah, my job's done, but so I thought the, I'd go off. Does the coach say if you want to rest, kick a goal, and then you get a rest? <laughs> <laughs> no, he doesn't. I was a bit buggered after every goal I kicked, so I came off for a bit of a spell, yeah. Hey, uh, Collingwood dominated all, all night last night, but I suppose you had a little bit of good fortune when Fev got injured early in the piece. Now, Fev, as we all know, is a fairly hard man. Oh. You'd think it would take a fairly hard man to put him down, but no. Uh, a goal umpire steps on his toe and that's it. Yeah, that, that umpire is known as Iron Thighs, I think. Like, you know, he's a very hard goal yeah, he, can, he can crack a walnut between those thighs, I've heard. Could you tell that, I mean, what is going on with Preston Giacomo? He is just killing them, isn't he? Yeah, look, he's a, he's a great fullback. Um, he does his job week in, week out for us, and um, I think he had a bit of a down week last week. He got injured in that, so so for him to bounce back this week and, and shut Fev down was good. Yeah, I'm glad you think so. Uh, Leon, <laughs> stick around, mate. There's plenty more we to talk to you about. Uh, more Leon Davis after that. When we come back, Strawny as well. Welcome back to the show, Leon Davis from the Collingwood Footy Club, our very special guest. Um, Leon, you've always been a gifted player, we know that, but the, your capacity, your abilities uh, found a peak in the last couple of years. Did you go through something? Did something happen to, for you to turn your whole career around, to become the player that you are now? Um, yeah, I think the, the penny just dropped for me, just seeing uh, the likes of Buckley and Lacuri and the way they worked at training, I think um, it took me a while to get the get the gist of it and, and know that that's what I had to do if I wanted to play midfield. So It's it was... incredible. It's like you've made a pact with the devil or something, honestly. You are so... You're now you get the ball, everyone just freaks out. You can't be tackled. You just do stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about the devil, Dave, but you, you had your critics, Leon, and I've heard Richard Tamling talk about this recently. I think Dermot Burton said something along the lines of he might be the worst player in the AFL. That was a pretty outlandish statement several years ago now. But how did you actually get that off your back as well? Because you hear those things and no doubt it, it hurts. 
Um, yeah, look, I, uh, I heard that and all that matters to me is what, what the club thinks and what the coach thinks and my teammates. So uh, outside outside stuff doesn't really bother me that much. So, um, yeah, he probably had a on, tough so. night at the nightclub when he said that. <laughs> and, and with Malthouse, I mean, he's shown enormous um, faith in you, came to the club at the same time. What sort of impact has he had on your career? Oh, he's had a massive impact. Um, he's shown the faith in me to keep me around the club and, and yeah, keep playing me when I know probably other coaches wouldn't have. So, um, <clears throat> so yeah, so he's had, had a mass, massive impact in my in my career. But you'd prefer Buckley as coach? Me and Mick's doing a great job. Can you see the pair working together? Can it work? Um, yeah, look, I'm not, I'm not too sure. I don't really look too much into it and, and I know the, the club will work it out and... Good answer. Whatever, whatever they come up with, we'll, we'll be good answer. Answer. Well, well, well done. Done. Maybe that's Bucks could help. Too good for you, Sammy. Maybe Bucks could help um, Mick Moldhouse out with his analogies because he got a little bit tripped up this week when he was talking about stuff. It's the law of the jungle. You strive to be number one dog, one number one lion, number one tiger, whatever jungle you're at. Whatever jungle you're at. I think you've been spent too much time down at Werribee Zoo, I think. <laughs> I'm glad he doesn't work at the zoo. <laughs> this is the lion, tiger, dog, whatever, you've enclosure. Done, you've, you have matured as a player. You've taken on a leadership role around the place. And you've taken... I love hearing you talk about young Brad Dick because you've taken him under your wing. And you've had a word to him about his goal celebrations. And I love this. I mean, he needed some help. He, he, he just didn't quite know what he was doing with that. It looks a bit awkward. But you've... And he just sort of... All over the <laughs> but now, now, this is... That's after some... Yeah. Yeah. You are a master classman, Leon Davis. You've talked this... him through it, haven't you? Yeah. I'll try to help him out. Look, he, he kicked a goal over at West Coast when we played over there and he just went a bit nuts. So I tried to, <laughs> try to chat to him straight after the game on the bus and spoke to him about it and just told him to pull it back a notch. So, uh, so yeah, so he's come you, up with that. When so. did you first come up with that? When was that? Uh, I think years ago. I think just, uh, just, yeah, just didn't really want to celebrate too much. and just yeah, it's... It's, a, it's great when you can do it all with one finger, though, isn't it? <laughs> I tried it, yeah. <laughs> now you've got a, you've got a few. You were sporting a few tats there, Leon, and uh, Brad Dickey's got a few tats as well. And yeah. the tats they're big down at Collingwood, aren't they? We've got uh, Beamsy, he's got a few tats, and Dane Swan's got the sleeve tat. Yeah. And I notice it's caught on with the coach as well. What? Mick Moldhouse, yeah, he's uh, <laughs> he's got a sleeve hanging there as well. Oh, I don't know. Do you think it suits Mick the uh, sleeve tat? Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> Mate, do you think you can win the flag? I mean, if everything goes right, you can win the flag. You're in the contention to win the premiership this year? Oh, I think if we're playing our best footy, I think we're playing a great team brand of footy, I think it goes a long way and we're, we're confident we can. Well, mate, it's, it's fantastic to watch you play footy. I don't sure like when you do it against Carlton, but uh, it's a, just a joy to watch you play footy and it's been great to have you on the show tonight. Thanks for coming. Thanks for having me.